welcome to another session of Gan Current Affairs and News Analysis. We have a lot of topic to deal with today. So these are some of the topics we have for today. We have three topics, Rohini Commission, NTB, uh, tuberculosis related, we have Dengue, then in prelims we have certain eight topics. So let's move on to it. Now we first we need to talk about the Rohini Commission. The Rohini panel uh, created uh, created Rohini Commission. This was created in October two, uh, 2017. The main aim of this commission is to actually subcategorize the other backward class, which we know that by uh, BP Mandal Commission, 27 percent reservation was given to the other backward classes in India. But uh, there has been a lot of issues within this. Uh, giving of 27 percent reservation to OBC because a small percentage of people has been dominating the majority share of this OBC reservation census. So the main important aim of this commission was to examine the question of categorization because over 2600 groups of caste groups has been listed in this OBC list. There is 2600 different caste group within this OBC list itself. So it was to question this subcategorization that this committee, Rohini Commission was given out. Examine 20 percent, 27 percent of the reservation in job and education, how much it was benefit, how much benefits the OBC actually got. But what they found is that a very few OBC groups dominate this entire 27 percentage of this uh, OBC reservation and the other percentage of people are not benefiting from it much. So there are some resolutions that the Rohini Commission has also mentioned is that explore the ways of subcategorization, subcategorizing these existing OBC groups. So in order to make that the redistribution of this reservation and such is equi equitable between all the OBC subgroups. What they want to do is like they are going to break this OBC and like with the, just think that this is the 27 percentage of reservation. Now this is the like 90 percentage of this OBC, 90 percentage of this 27 percentage of reservation is just going to a very small percentage of population. They are the majority who get the benefits of this. The other sectors like the other person does not get much of this. So they want to revise this criteria by which the smaller majority who was getting all the benefits for this years get less and the majority of people who were not getting the benefits actually get the benefits this time. So this kind of the resolution that the uh, Rohini committee has worked on, they want to work a formula of breaking up this gas group so that the highest share of the 27% reservation go to the per people or the OBCs which hasn't got any, any, uh, any benefits out of this and the majority minimum portion goes to the other few OBC groups who has been dominating within this. So in this we should also know two other things that is the Mandal Commission report and the Indra Swami case. This Mandal Commission was created in 1979 to identify socially and educationally backward class. So this is the second such committee that was created. They identify the 52 percent of the population and other backward classes and they should be given about 27 percentage of reservation. This 27 percentage was said that so this overall reservation does not exceed 50 percent because there was already other modes of re reservation that was happening. So, if we are adding this 27 percentage of OBC as well, the total reservation should not exceed about 50 percentage. This was implemented in the year 1990. So, the Indira Swami case was against this 27 percent reservations, but the Supreme Court stated it as constitutionally valid, but they also put some conditions to it that the total reservation must not exceed 50 percentage cap and the concept of creamy layer was also introduced within this OBC. A well-off person who has land, money and they are not social educational backward should be excluded from this list. Only genuine people who are really socially and educationally backward should be kept in this creamy layer uh, in this OBC list. So we should know about the Rohini Commission, Mandal Commission and Indra Swami case. More the recommendation all, all the three should also be known. So something which is important. Now moving on to our next we have TB detention smear. Microscopy share still holds sway. The major thing which we knew is that we have a global, we have the ancient target to achieve to eliminate TB within 2025. Whereas the global target to eliminate tuberculosis is 2030. Our Indian target is to eliminate by 2025. We have kept it five years before 2030 so that we can achieve it earlier. But India faces a lot of problem. We have problem with testing and diagnosing of TB. 
So I'll be telling you how this is a problem in India in our next slide. First, we need to look out to some of the reports that is existing globally in case of tuberculosis. We have the WHO Global TB report of 2020. Over 40% of the 10.6 million people who has been affected by tuberculosis are not diagnosed properly. Like majority share is in India, countries like India, Indonesia and Philippines where 60% of the people, the number of people with TB has been drop in the number of people who has been properly diagnosed in the case of TB. This drop is mainly because of COVID-19. Because of the shift in the, all the pandemic and all, there was a drop in the number of testing and also diagnosing of the TB in case of India, Indonesia and Philippines. Also, we have National TB Prevalence Survey in India, which is conducting 2019-20 report. 60% of the population did not even get tested for TB. There is a big high gap in case of like many states in India regionally itself. In Kerala, if it's just 42 percentage in Haryana, it's about 88 percentage. Now we need to know certain things in the case of why India has a problem with the testing and detection of TB. Now there are actually two methodologies by which this TB can be tested. One is this spear microscopy and the other is molecular testing. Now the spear microscopy usually like deals with there is a swab. Like uh, in case when we, there was COVID, for COVID testing there was swab which we would actually check, uh, check if the case there was COVID or not. Similarly, in the case of smear microscopy, this, uh, the sample was taken in the swab and then kept under a microscope. But this method is less effective to know. Rifampicin type of tuberculosis. This rifampicin is multi-drug resistant TB. As I have already told you, there are two lines of first, uh, first line and second line drug, uh, drugs for this tuberculosis. If this both first and second line doesn't work, then they then the person is diagnosed as multi-drug drug resistant TB and we told about a medicine called Bedequinine last month for specifically for the treatment of this disease. Now if we are coming to molecular testing, this is the equipment of molecular testing. This identifies this rifampicin in the first insert itself because, which means that the accuracy in this case is pretty much bigger compared to that of spear microscopy. But the problem with India is that they are still dependent majorly on spear microscopy because of which like they are very sensitive and they don't actually not very effective in identification of this MDR TB because of which a lot of cases in India are not properly diagnosed thus the treatment is very as such. Okay, that is the National Strategic Plan for TB Elimination 2017-2025. India with this National Strategic Plan for TB Elimination actually has introduced uh, like molecular testing. There has been increase in the molecular testing from about 14,000, 40,000 to about 13.4 million. But the problem is that which we know that if India has increased the molecular testing, gradually the spear microscopy form of testing should decrease. But in the case of India, the spear microscopy testing has also increased. Molecular testing has also been increased. So that is what this, what the condition that took place under this National Strategic Plan for Elimination of TB and this. Under this 77 percentage of cases were tested via the smear microscopy, only 23 percentage was tested based on the molecular testing. That is where India's problem lies in. Because if we want to eliminate tuberculosis TB by 2025, we need to shift from this conventional model of smear microscopy to about molecular testing. If we don't shift this method, we are not going to achieve this eliminate TB target by 2025. That is a problem which in India. Even in 2014, WHO guidelines have told about using a gene expert, gene expert molecular testing. Even WHO recommended the using of this machine to identify and target TB. But in India, we are still depending majorly on spear microscopy. As I have told you, 77 percentage tested on spear microscopy, which doesn't show. It kind of miss cases of this uh, rifampinic. So that is the condition of India right now. If we want to achieve this target of eliminating TB, we should shift this method. We should have proper testing and proper detection of the TB so that we could align the drugs correctly for it. Now that is this whole article talking about. Now this is a news from our Indian Express. There has been a rise in dengue cases in India. You see 243 cases so far there has been an increase in dengue, especially in the case of dengue and then in malaria. Now you see why is there an increase in trend in dengue and malaria right now because we have seen in the north India that the places are flooding right now, the cities are flooded so because of this flooding the cities are 
are waterlogged continuously for two to three days where days where these mosquitoes are blooming because of which there has been a lot of cases and particularly in India we have found type 2 type of variant of dengue as I have already told you there are four types four types of dengue there is type 1 2 3 and 4 whereas 2 is the most dangerous one out of the four in India we are particularly seeing this type 2 type 2 kind of strain of dengue there has been 243 case of dengue 72 malaria and 14 case of chikungunya as such this is just the, um, this is just the count till july the dengue fever is created by dengue virus dengue flavivi ridae family and there is actually particularly no such antiviral treatment currently therefore dengue in dengue in the world now this is the indian scenario there has been outbreaks of dengue or this dengue in other countries as well south america brazil peru and bolivia i have already told you in my last class in the case of dengue related to this but i am taking it once again so that you could revise there is 2 million cases recorded from south america now all the type four types of strains has been recorded which is actually becoming a lot of challenge for the south america because there is all the type four type of strains is causing the headaches now Europe, increase in heat waves, flood and prolonged hot summers, there is a change in climate change happening. For this mosquitoes, they need hot and humid climates to thrive. So now Europe is kind of becoming like that. Thus, there is a favorable condition for this breeding of mosquitoes. Now in Middle East, Egypt and Sudan, these were hot, not humid. But now we are recently seeing new new cases of uh, emerging of dengue from these Middle East, Egypt and Sudan type of countries. Now, what does India has to do? We have domestic breeding checkers like these DBC, these staffs go to localities and other areas. They actually talk about checking the larvae and how they tell about how to eradicate such kind of larvae growth and if they find one, they eradicate it immediately. They also run initiatives to give awareness to people to how to protect themselves from waterborne diseases. But the problem is that the DBC's number is pretty much less and there are a lot of colonies and a lot of cities in India. So the government has taken new measures to include ASHA workers, grade C, group C employees and other gardeners to actually help this DBC in checking every locality and spreading awareness so that the people are protected against waterborne diseases. Now there are only two dengue vaccines developed so far. There is dengue Ixia by French. Like if you have been infected once, this uh, vaccine is effective. If you have not been infected before, this kind of vaccine is not effective. You have to be previously infected for this vac vaccine to be effective. Then we have Kudenga from Japan. This is available for everyone if you are infected previously or not, you can take this vaccine Kudenga. In India, there is only one DNA based vaccine. We are undergoing tri trials and the first stage we have got promising results as well. This is developed by the National Center for Biological Science, Bangalore. So that is some key areas which you need to know about dengue. Now we have a article organ shortage continues to cost life now in india about 3 lakh people require organs there is a, but there is a problem of supply in it there is a lot of growing demand for this organ but there is a lack of supply because of which like 20 more patients are dying per day because they are not getting any organ transplantation now in the coming years the donors for organs has increased but we are not able to meet the demand it was just about 6000 in this 2013 14 now it's presently about 16 K of donors this year, but still it is not enough to cover all the 3 lakh people presently. Now, the problem with India is that uh, like only one donor is available in the case of 1 million people. Just but for the 3 lakh people to get organ donation, there should be at least a minimum of 65 donors per million people. Even in the countries like US and Spain, this donation is like 30 to 50 donations per million whereas India now what the state is just one person one donor per million population for a decade now so that is why there is a lower cases there is a lower organ transplantations happening in the country right now and there is a lower numbers of donors available right now so there is a concern between the supply and the demand here thus affecting the patients now in this also 
70 to 75 percentage of the donors are women. They are like wives, mothers and sisters. There is a reduction in the men donors in here. Like government has taken a lot of initiative to bridge this gap of supply and demand. They have like doing away with the domicile rule. They have removed the age restrictions. They have removed the fee and also introduced passive euthanasia like withdraw the life support a bit early, facilitate law or cross-border organ transplantation special cash relief for employee who has donated organs and all. There are some of the initiative or the steps that has been taken by the government but still to no way only one, one donor per million population has been available. The thing here is that there need to be increasing awareness about the people. Like if you are leaving healthy person, you should actually sign up for organ donation when you die. Like there is no, the thing is that Organ donation is important because it could save your one decision in your life of organ donation could save like six to seven lives actually. Like in case of one candy which is a dead body, a body could actually give about organs to and help about eight lives, save eight lives. And if you are donating kidneys, if two, two kidneys are donated, it would help two persons from dialysis treatment. If you are donating one liver, this liver can be split up between two people who are waiting for liver in the waiting list. If you donate to organ means that two other people are given a second chance in life. Or if you are even donating one tissue, like you can donate bone marrow, tendons, cartilage, connective, etc. You are saving up to 75 lives. So today in India there is a requirement for organ donors actually. So we need to increase uh, awareness about this. Even if a member dies, the families have to collectively take decision to donate the organ so that the other people can leave and move on. So, for faculties are coming forward for this noble deed. So, that is what India needs today. India needs to pick up its space in organ donation. Now, we are entered into our prelims bite sections. Now, you see, Ukraine, I told you last class that Ukraine has bombed the noroscopic port of Russia using sea drones. Now, this is the sea drone which you are seeing here. It has an explosive about 450 kg of TNT was inside this sea drone. It looks like a small ship. There is also a camera fitted. There is a det det detonator and also the explosive comes under this. It could travel through the surface or it could travel underwater too. Now this is a new gen like this was been first used in trial by Ukraine itself. No other countries has actually started using the sea based drone. So this is the whole about this drone. I have told you about the incident of bombing. Dog dead Novorossik port of Russia yesterday. Now, this is the important thing which you need to know about the sea drones. Now, we have a news of clouded leopards in news. So, you see, there are some unique features for this clouded leopards. Now, these are linked to the Ice Age saber tooth because they have the largest canines in proportion to its skull size. So, it's kind of unique and could be linked to the saber tooth because it has the largest canine which is equal to their skull size. Also they have a rotating rear angle. Now you see, usually when an animal gets off a tree, the head will be here and body will be down. But in the case of the clouded leper, their head is down and their body is like parallel to the way they are going down. That is what this ra uh, rotating rear angle that enables it to climb down head first. This, is, this can't be done by most of the animals. This can't be even done by other type of leopards. So, this is a unique, very unique feature of this clouded leopard because they could come head down first. Now, they are also called the ninjas of the forest because like each an animal, we can predict their methods. They, we can predict their hunting methods, predict their livelihood or habitat method. But this cannot be predicted in the case of uh, clouded leopards because their techniques varies. That's why they are called the ninjas of the forest. They have striking agility and strength which, is, which other humans were not even able to predict as well. Now, this is vulnerable. There are two types of leopards. We have a mainline clouded leopard. And we have Sundra clouded leopard which is actually native to Boreo and Sumatra. In India, this mainland clouded leopard is distributed between central Nepal, Peninsula, Malaysia and such. Now, these both are under vulnerable list of IUCN. They are vulnerable to poaching. Also, there is high risk of extinction of their habitats and wildlife. So, this is all about the clouded leopard. There are two, three unique features which you need to know about. They are like linked to ice age saber too. They have rear ankle rotating air ankle ability which helps them to come down of trees, head down first. And they are also called the ninjas of the forest and they are vulnerable 
to extinction to deforestation loss of the habitat and poaching and iucn vulnerable in the in the red list so these some of the important things which facts or which you need to know about the clouded leopard now 130 year old palace in kerala to be declared a monument so this palace is known as kuttikonam palace it's also called as ammachi ammachi kottayam this is 130 years old it's found in the idikki district of kerala now this used to be the summer residence of the travancore kings and this was actually created by moolan tirunal drama verma with the help of british planner called jd munro this was a travancore this are created between 1885 to 1924 this also this palace has an ab abandoned tunnel which actually lead to the peer made sri krishna swami temple so there's some important facts which you need to know about this is the archaeologists asi had declared that every this can be declared as a monument so this kuttikonam palace or this amachi kottaram 130 years old it is found in the idiki district of kerala and created under the moolam tirunal rama verma with the help of jd munro so this is an important fact which you need to know about this kottaram or palace now we have this treaty called the amazon cooperation treaty organization this is a very important treaty treaty now the brazilian president there is a new brazilian president called the lulis silvia who wants to activate this grouping so that they could help the amazon forest it's an intergovernmental organization which is constituted by eight american countries like bolivia brazil colombia ecuador guinea peru suriname and venezuela so these are the eight countries you need to know the list of this eight countries which is coming under this organization this organization has been inactive for a long the last summit was conducted in about 2009 now this brazilian president want to activate this grouping again so they that they can protect the amazon the problem here happened because the last president in brazil was not doesn't didn't believe in global uh, global uh, global warming or climate change this exploited amazon forest area for economical benefits as such so this new president want to reverse the policies and help the amazon forest that is why he has been increasing to coordinate this amazon cooperation treaty organization amazon cooperation treaty organization so they can protect the amazon so this is what i have explained in this video the amazon within 100 billion they could actually they have a lot of carbon absorbing trees and amazon is kind of a key buffer in the case to against global warming but presently what is happening in amazon is that they have a carbon emission which has increased up to 117 percentage in 2020 compared to the previous decade so mr lula wants to work with other american countries latin american countries to save the forest from without destroying it so just go through the slide i have already explained it now the enigmatic indian eagle owl so this is the indian eagle owl this indian eagle owl was later characteristics along with the eurasian eagle owl now this indian eagle owl specifically has been separated from this eurasian eagle owl now this eagle owl you can see here it kinds has some kind of horns which actually helps them protect against any predators if these have prominent ear tufts that looks like horns which help them against any predators now the diet consists of rats bandicoots and even bats now these are not dependent more on forest and they are actually they are nearby to agriculture land thus helping the farmers getting these rodents and bats away from their field as well now a lot of myths and superstitions are associated with this kind of eagle owl they, in rural india they find like these are superstitious around they are carriers of ill omens and such these are some myths and superstitions there is a lot of a uh, lot of available right now a lot of these kind of birds in india thus they are of least concern in the iucn status now indian eagle owl was predominantly uh, uh, now distinguished from the eurasian eagle owl it has prominent ear tuft it's one of the unique features of this owl and they mostly feed on rats bandicoots and even bats and they are not found they are less dependent upon the forest and they are also of a least concern these are some of the important things which you need to know about this indian eagle owl now uh, in this today science and tech we have an ingre uh, increase we have an interesting news of perusis colossus now this you can see here this is what of imaginary feature of this colossus found the colossus which has been found in peru is about 39 million million years 
old. Now, we used to think that blue whale is the heaviest and the biggest animal, water animal, marine animal in the world. But now this theory is tested because this, this color cell which we found is two to times bigger than the bigger than that of blue whale. Thus, it's a kind of challenging for the title we have given to blue whale as the heaviest animal on earth. And this body mass is also 85 to 340 tons, which is greater than that of blue whale. So, there are some important things which you need to know about this. Fossil has been found in Peru. It is about tested for about 39 million years old. It is two to time bigger than existing blue whale. Now, coming on to the last topic, we have the Durand Cup RSD. Durand Cup and football. Now, this is to be hoisted in Assam. The opening ceremony is also witnessed by about 12,000 footballer this is asia's oldest and the world's third oldest football tournament that's not much about it but still the durand cup is important it's asia's oldest and the world's third la oldest football tournament to be conducted and this 132nd edition will be happening in assam this year now that is it for today this is all the news there has been a lot of news we discussed three to four mains topic and eight seven to eight prelims topic I haven't included any question today because we have a lengthy session today. So, I will be discussing separately. So, that's all for today. You can get this PDF from our Telegram channel, Garanda Thank you and have a nice day.